Hey crocheters! Have you ever found yourself staring at a skein of yarn, dreaming of all the fabulous things you could create, but feeling a bit overwhelmed by where to start? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a chain, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. But that's not all! I will also crochet those same stitches in the back loops only, and when our essential stitches sample is done, I'll show you how I weave in the ends. If you're a beginner or looking to brush up on the basics, you're in the right place. And just think, with these essential stitches under your belt, you'll have the skills to tackle so many fun and exciting projects, from cozy blankets to stylish garments and everything in between. So grab your hook, grab your yarn, and start stitching. If you want to follow along, I'm going to be using worsted weight acrylic yarn, category 4, and a 5mm crochet hook. But first, a very important note on how you should hold a hook. There is no wrong or right way. It's what feels comfortable to you, and I encourage you to try different ways to hold your hook. I find it most comfortable to hold my hook like this, also known as pencil grip. I've also tried what's known as the knife grip, and it's okay for me, but I just naturally go back to what I find comfortable. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. Actually, there's one thing, sorry. I don't know if everyone knows how to make a slip knot, and I don't want to make assumptions, so I'll just go through it quickly. I start with making a loop, putting the tail end over the working yarn, and then I insert my hook from the back to the front, and then I yarn over and I pull it through that loop and pull on this tail end and there is my slip knot and then I can just tighten it by pulling onto the working yarn. So I will do that quickly just one more time just in case. So make a loop, hold it between your thumb and finger, insert the hook from the back to the front, yarn over the hook, Pull it through the loop and pull. And there's the slip knot. Okay, now for real, let's start this tutorial. First up is the chain stitch. This forms the foundation of your work and is used to create the initial row or the foundation chain for your project. To make a chain stitch, you're going to, once you have your slip knot, you're going to yarn over your hook and pull it through. And that is your first chain stitch. Repeat this process until you have the desired number of chains. For this video, if you are following along, I'm going to start with 21 chains. So why 21 chains? I want to have 20 stitches and I'm going to need that extra chain to give me the height I need for the first row, which is going to be a single crochet. Remember to count your stitches regularly, especially at the end of rows. It's easy to lose track, but keeping an eye on your stitch count will help you stay on track and will help you keep your sanity too. Okay, I have my 21 chains, and now the next part of this tutorial is going to be making a single crochet. So as I mentioned, I have my 21 chains because I want 20 stitches. And I'm going to be using this first chain to give me the height I need to make my first single crochet. So to make our first single crochet, we're going to insert the hook into the second chain from the hook. So this is the first chain from the hook and this is the second chain. So I'm going to insert my hook into this chain then I'm going to yarn over and pull it through. So I have two loops on the hook right now. Then I'm going to yarn over again and pull through both loops. And there is our first single crochet. So here is that extra chain that we skipped. And then this is the second chain where I made the first single crochet. And now I'm going to continue into the next chain. I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and I have two loops on the hook, yarn over again, and pull through both loops. And again, insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, 
yarn over again, pull through both loops. And I will just continue making single crochets across into each chain until the last stitch or the last chain. As you're working your stitches, be mindful of your tension. If you're holding the yarn too loosely, you will have loose stitches and the opposite of that would be holding the yarn too tightly, which would give you super tight stitches that you won't be able to stitch into. Tension is like the Goldilocks of yarn crafts. You want it to be just right, not too tight, not too loose. Practice keeping a consistent tension in your yarn as you work so that you have neat uniform stitches. And at the end of the row, work your last single crochet in the last stitch and be careful not to confuse the slip knot with a chain. I usually make my slip knots pretty tight so it's impossible to work a stitch into it, but it can happen, so just take note. So I'm going to work my last single crochet into this last chain. Now let's turn and move on to the half double crochet stitch. So we're going to start the row with a chain to bring up our hook to the height of a half double crochet. And speaking of which, a note on starting chains. In this tutorial, I'm not counting the starting chain as a stitch, but you will find some patterns that do so. And it's always important to read the pattern instructions carefully. So you'll also find patterns where you start a row with two chains for a half double crochet. And again, this is specific to an instruction or just personal preference. And when you're comfortable and confident in crocheting stitches, you'll decide to ignore making a one chain at the start and make two because you like that more. Isn't crochet so adaptable? Okay, back to the half double crochet. So now I've got my one chain that I'm starting with. I'm going to yarn over first which if you remember with the single crochet we did not yarn over first but now we're making taller stitches so we're going to yarn over insert into the first stitch yarn over again pull through so we, now we have three loops on the hook now we're going to yarn over again and pull through all the loops on the hook and there's our first half double crochet so again yarn over insert into the next stitch and then yarn over pull it through yarn over again and pull through all loops yarn over first insert into the next stitch yarn over pull through remember you always want those three loops on the hook yarn over and pull through all of them at the same time Tension and stiffness can lead to discomfort and tired and sore muscles and you might just stop crocheting if you start to get tired. So remember to relax and take breaks to stretch, roll your wrist a few times before getting back into it. Okay, now at the end of the row, 
it's it might be helpful to turn the work around just for a second to look at the previous row and to remember that this is the first single crochet that we worked on and this is where we want to work our last half double crochet so i'm going to work into the stitch into the first single crochet here's our last half double crochet and i want to point out this is that chain that we skipped when we first made our single crochet so don't work into this chain this is only the starting chain that helped us to create the first single crochet in the previous row don't work a chain here or sorry don't work a half double crochet into this chain because then you'll end up with an extra stitch and it'll just be very uneven so be mindful of that and not working into the starting chains by accident moving on to the double crochet stitch Again, we're going to turn our work and in the double crochet stitch we want to make it taller so in this case I'm going to start with two chains and again this comes to the instructions you're following or personal preference um, I like to start with two chains but you will find instructions or you just might like to start with three chains Again, uh, for this particular sample, the, ch the starting chains do not count as a stitch. So I have my two chains to get me started. This is going to give me the height for the first double crochet stitch. Just like the half double crochet stitch, I'm going to yarn over, insert into the first stitch, yarn over again, and pull through. So we have three loops on the hook, just like the half double crochet stitch. But the difference now, to make it even taller, is we're going to yarn over, pull through just the first two loops. So we still have two loops left on the hook. Yarn over again and pull through the last two loops. So there's our first double crochet. So you can see that it is a bit taller than the half double crochet because it's kind of split up. We have the first two yarn overs and pull throughs and then the, the second. So we'll do that again, yarn over insert into the next stitch yarn over and pull through three loops on the hook yarn over pull through the first two loops only yarn over and pull through the remaining loops and there's our second double crochet so i'm going to keep doing that yarn over insert into the next stitch yarn over pull through three loops on the hook yarn over Pull through the first two loops, yarn over, and pull through the last two. When I started crocheting this stitch, it took me a while to figure out with the number of times you have to yarn over, but as with anything, it does get easier with practice. Crocheting is like any other skill. The more you do it, the better you'll get. So don't be discouraged by mistakes. Embrace them as learning opportunities. And again, we are at the end of the row and I'm going to work the last stitch into the half double crochet from the last row. So again, don't confuse it with the starting chains because I will just give you extra stitches at the end. So I'm looking for, if you can see it, there's this little V here. I'm working, I'm looking for that V and I'm going to insert my hook so it's underneath that V shape and that's where I'm going to work my stitch my last double crochet and that's the end of the row so this is what three rows look like with the first row being single crochet half double crochet and double crochet so now that we've covered the basic stitches let's talk about working in the back loops only or BLO for short so you can see that each stitch has a bit of a V shape here 
So I'm going to start with a single crochet row. So I'm going to chain one. If I was doing a regular single crochet, I would just insert my hook into the stitch and I've got the two V's uh, over the hook. But because I want to work in the back loops only, I'm going to insert my hook just into this back loop. So I'm splitting up the V shape and I'm just going into the one loop in the back. And then I will just complete my single crochet as I normally would. And in some cases, I prefer, this is again, uh, personal preference or even just instructions. If you're following instructions in a particular pattern, I like to start my first row of a back loop only row by working into both loops. I think it just looks a little neater and it feels a bit more secure when I do that. But again, this is personal preference. And now the remaining stitches, I'm going to work in the back loops. So I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop and work my single crochet as usual. And so this particular technique is really great when you're trying to make uh, ribbing for hats and sweaters or any, really any projects that you're working on that requires some kind of texture effect. And here is the last stitch actually. So I'm going to work into the both into both loops in the back, in the last stitch. So at the end of the row, just like I did with the first stitch, I'm going to work in both loops instead of the back loops. And again, this is personal preference. Um, just making the last and the first stitch into both loops. So that's what a row looks like with working single crochet in the back loops only so you can see it creates this this textured this uh, ribbing effect now with half double crochet the same thing I'm going to make my first half double crochet in both loops in the first stitch so there's my half double crochet and then the remaining stitches I'm going to work in the back loop only And again, at the end, I'm going to work my last half double crochet in both loops. And there is our row of half double crochet in the back loop only. And then the last row I'm going to do is double crochet in the back loop only. So I'm going to chain two to start. Again, it doesn't, this starting chain doesn't count as a stitch yarn over and I'm going to work my first stitch in both loops and then I will work the remaining stitches in the back loops so here's our V shape and here's our back loop so the taller the stitches and working in the back loops only the more drape you're going to get from your fabric so it's going to feel a bit more flexible than if you were working in the back loop only in single crochet the entire project. That will give you something that's, like I was mentioning earlier, you can use it to make ribbing for sweaters or for hats. But if you're doing this with half double, cro half double crochet or double crochet, working in the back loops only, it won't be as uh, dense or, or structured, just the nature of the stitch. And so this is great just for having a nice flexible and soft fabric that you can use for anything, blankets and garments. Um, and it'll just be nice and soft and uh, have a bit of 
texture to it. Part of, part of the design of the project you're working on, which is, it's very nice and subtle. All right, and our last double crochet, I'm gonna work into both loops of the last stitch. And there is our last row. So here's our little sample. And of course, if you want, you can continue this particular pattern. You can start the next row with a single crochet in both loops and then half double crochet and then double crochet and then switch it up again to practice by working a row of single crochet in the back loop only and then half double crochet in the back loop only and double crochet in the back loop only and then you know keep going until you've got maybe repeat these last uh, six rows and you might have this much <laughs> you might have a piece that's about this big which is great if you want a new coaster or just maybe a swatch or a square for a potential larger project like a blanket or a scarf. You can, cro you can continue crocheting in this way, repeating these same rows until it's long enough to be a scarf. Finally, let's wrap things up by weaving in the ends. This is an essential finishing technique that secures the loose yarn and gives your project a finished polished look. So to weave in the ends, thread the yarn tail onto a yarn needle and we're going to sew it back and forth in the stitches on the wrong side of your work. So first, if you don't know which is the wrong side and the right side, this is going to determine be determined by the pattern or the instructions you're following. Or if it's something that you yourself are designing and working on, then you decide which is going to be the wrong side. In this case, I am going to go with, uh, this is going to be the wrong side. So this is my right side. I don't want the ends to show from this side of the project. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to use my yarn needle to go into the stitches here. I'm going to try and be as neat as I can and not pull too, too much so that it doesn't get snagged or bunched up. So I've got it pulled in through this um, starting chain area and first stitch and I'm just going to weave it in. I'm going in behind stitches and then wrapping it around and through and essentially just making sure that it's not going to come out. And if the needle comes out, just you can always start to weave the needle in through the stitches and then insert and then thread the yarn through the needle afterwards, which uh, I usually tend to do once the tail of the yarn starts to get too short for the needle's length. So there's my first uh, weaved in yarn end and I'm going to cut this. And then I'll repeat that on the first yarn tail. And again, here is our wrong side. I can tell because here's a little bit of yarn where I just cut off. So that's, um, it's really helpful to just leave a little tiny bit of yarn so that you can tell which is the wrong side. So again, I'm going to insert this through the beginning of the row, but not pulling it too much because I don't want it to get bunched up. And then just finding a stitch to thread it through. And sometimes when I'm weaving in the ends, I do like to go through the yarn strands. So it's it's easy to just go between stitches, but the yarn can always just come out through that. So I do try to go through yarn strands as well so that it uh, it's even more secure and even better hidden. So uh, my yarn just fell out of my needle, so I'm going to insert it. I'm not going to pull the yarn out, or I'm not pulling the needle out because it's already threaded through and I don't want to lose this, so... And I can just pull it through. And there we go. I can just trim this a little bit. And there's our little sample. And I do like this uh, texture with the ribbing. 
here's where we started this is on the wrong side and here's the first row that we started so single crochet half double crochet double crochet and then again with the back loops only single half and double crochets so both sides have different looks to them as you can see which is really fun it's a it's really fun to see and also gives you ideas for playing with uh, different projects and that is it there you have it these are the essential crochet stitches that i wanted to show you today i hope you found this tutorial helpful and informative and if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more tutorials and videos and tips like this thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video happy crocheting